across tube number two. Gonna keep it weird, because I think y'all dug it. Um, so I'm back recording my second video. Um, I recorded a few clips, so this one might be a bit choppy. But I kind of wanted to follow along with the progress as I was going, um, and to show you different things, and I have crap spread out all over the house. So the lighting isn't great, so I had to kind of pick and choose where I can film when the lighting was good. Um, but I think you guys will understand, and it'll be the best way for me to show you everything that I have going on, which is a lot. Um, quilt projects and all sorts of cross-stitching, fabric dyeing, making bags, and, you know, all the fun stuff that keeps me happy and sane. Mostly sane. Um... But before I forget, I wanted to start out by thanking a few people. Uh, Emily C., she gave me a great shout-out, um, Eclectic Possessions, in not the video she just posted, but the one before. And it just brought a lot of traffic uh, to my little first floss tube, and I want to thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate it. I appreciate that you took the time to do that. Um, Kelly, the Evergreen Needle, she gave me a little shout-out on Instagram in the stories. If you guys aren't watching Instagram stories, I feel like you're missing a lot. Um, sometimes I don't post like daily pictures, but I'll post um, a quick little clip or a quick uh, snap on there that I didn't think maybe it was good enough to post like an entire update or something like that. And I'll, you know, kind of put some of the hand sewing that I'm doing on there so that I don't bore people with every single block as I'm going. Um, and a lot of people just post little snippets of their regular life on their Instagram stories. So um, if you guys aren't checking them out, I really highly suggest that you do because, you know, you're missing some pretty good and a lot of times funny content, not just from me, but from everybody out there. So if you guys don't know what that is, um, it's the tiny little bubbles that you see on the top of like the Instagram home screen. So it'll have like different profiles. Just go ahead and give it a click and you'll be able to watch, um, you know, short clips, pictures, uh, boomerangs. You know, which for those that get a little motion sick might not work out too great, but there's not too many of those. Give it a shot. Um, you'll get to see some more of my stuff that way because I don't post every day. Um, also wanted to give a quick shout out to Kara. Is that how you say your name? From Kay's Cross Stitch. Someone pointed out that she had given me a shout out because um, I had popped up as, you know, it's my first floss tube. So she gave me a watch and I really appreciate it. And I have a little thank you recorded for you. And I think... You'll see what it is later. So um, if somebody wants to give her a heads up, I'd appreciate it. Um, and also lastly to McKenna at Every Stitch Counts. I just finished watching your video where you so kindly took the time to give me a shout out and to talk a little bit about my projects. Um, so I really appreciate that. And I'm going to show you the needle point that I told you that I was going to show you. And um, I have a finish that I think might interest you as well. So thank you and I hope you keep watching. And for everyone else that's took the time to taking the time to watch, to like, to comment, to subscribe, I really, really, really appreciate it. It means a lot. I know this community is awesome. But when you guys take the time to do that kind of stuff, it, it really means a lot and I appreciate it. So keep coming back. Keep watching. Let's keep getting weird with one another. You know you like it. Come on. All right, so let's move on to, you know, what you guys are here for, the good stuff. Um, trying to figure out what would be best to start with. I guess I can go ahead and show you some needle points. I found my first project, like my first actual, actual project. It's a little flat fold. Um, I started off easy. Um, and even back then, y'all, I was keeping it weird because this was done in bright colors. And I converted it. So um, it's kind of like, um, what do you call it? Like a modern interpretation of a floral uh, design. So you can see that all of these are metallic threads right in here, uh, different greens. I have decorative stitching on the border. I don't know if you can catch that. I might have to switch the camera so you guys can see the details better on this. But um, this was finished incredibly. You can see the metallic trim. Here's the back of the flat fold. 
the little peak. I mean, it's incredible. You cannot see any little spot where it shows anything out of the ordinary. I mean, this thing is perfection. And um, what all did I use? I might have used some wool, some silks, um, some rainbow gallery threads that have uh, metallic woven into them. Um, I'm thinking the gold might be a Krynic, I don't know. Krynic, Krynic, I don't know. The ladies at the needlepoint shop always say Krynic. I hear you guys say Krynic. Y'all know what it is. Metallic. Um, the gold is a Krynic braid. I'm not sure what number it is because um, I made this years ago. And this is a horrible floss that I hate stitching with, but it gives an incredible result. Um, it's this beautiful deep berry color. Um, and I think I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera so you guys can see this and more especially so you guys can see the next project. All right, we're back. And you guys can definitely see this better. So look here. You can see my decorative stitched border. Just really simple, but I think you guys have a better idea of that of that uh, fiber that I used. And how, ooh, don't mind the hair, it gets everywhere. And you can see the sheen. In that fiber, it is gorgeous. You can see the shimmer and the metallic. And I think I did a pretty good job for my first project. Give you guys another quick look at the back so you can see how great this was finished for me. Like, you can't really see anything there. That's done pretty well. Um, Needlepoint, y'all. All right, here's my next one. Here's the one that I told McKenna that I was going to show. Oh, yes. Yes, you guys are not mistaken. The people that have been following me a long time on Instagram may have seen this when I first posted her. But this is the Dolly Llama, y'all. D-O-L-L-Y Llama. And she bad. Like, bad isn't good. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Let me see if I can keep this from shaking too much and show you guys how much of a bad bee she actually is. These ears is a stitch called Turkey Work. Um, and I finished her years ago, so you're technically supposed to cut this and then like really fuzz it out, but I kind of like how it looks. Um, you can see just how much that stands up off of the canvas. She got some fur in her ears. This is this is all thread and fibers, y'all. Come on. If you guys didn't know this existed, get thee to a needlepoint shop and you will be amazed. Um, she also has fur for bangs. I gave her eyelashes, y'all. She has the best set of falsies this side of the Mississippi. Mm-hmm. She has these metallic little coffee brown eyes. She has a suede nose. That feels so nice. I've got some metallic lip gloss because, you know, she's from the early 90s and frosting was big back then. Um, decorative stitching, and I kind of blended it out into her cheek. You see, I, can, I blended those flosses um, and continued it down here. To some backstitched curly cues. We got some more fuzz over here, and this fiber is actually really interesting as well. You can see that it has like a little kink to it. And this portion of the background right here, that's a, a tent stitch, uh, what I call um, basket weave. And um, that's kind of the basic. You can do anything in this basket weave, but then, you know, you can definitely move out to the decorative stitching um, like I did in other portions. Um, and there are books with this stuff. So, I mean, you can use hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stitches to get pretty much any effect that you want. 
and I did this background um, with a Krynik and I think the yellow is actually a pearl cotton um, and it almost looks like a real pretty wallpaper um, I'm gonna get close hopefully you got I'm not making you guys sick but you can see that it is slightly multicolored it has like these tiny fibers and pinks and greens and yellows and blues so basically all the colors that are in the actual llama and she is gorgeous and she belongs in an incredible shadow box that will probably cost me a crap ton of money but I'm hoping that finally maybe this year I can get her done because I feel like she needs to be up on a wall baby has been in a corner for far too long and you, you know how it goes do I, do I have to say it nobody puts baby in a corner y'all nobody so my little Dalai Lama I need to get her framed and um professionally probably not at Michael's or Joanne's I need to find someone that's really well versed with uh needlework because she fancy mm-hmm all right let me get back to our regularly scheduled program and see if I can prop you guys back up again so I can have the use of my hands. So if I'm not mistaken, I'll be putting this in somewhere. Not quite sure yet, but um, I think that uh, you guys know what the deal is with this. This is a needlepoint. These are some pansies, and I'm including this as a thanks. Uh, to uh, Kay's cross stitch that had given me a shout out um, I think that she's into them and this was one of the first bigger projects that I'd worked on and um, I gave it to my mom I got it professionally framed and here you can see some of the close-up details um, this darker area right here that's all done I think in um, Rainbow Gallery Very Velvet or something velvet. It's a velveted thread and it feels so nice. I just love it. Um, as you guys can see, the framer did an incredible job. He got right up to that border that I did with a double mat in purple to match the flowers and in white to make it look crisp. And kind of like that burnished gold frame to echo the border that I'd done to it. Um, and this project is done all in decorative stitching. It's all really simple, um, but it's all decorative stitching. Um, and I was really happy with it. It hangs in my mom's kitchen. She loves it. And I have to see what else I can dig up to show you guys. Okay, here we go, another clip. I think I've realized that uh, this one's going to be a little clip-tastic. Hopefully you guys don't mind too much, and hopefully I'm not moving around the camera a ridiculous amount. But this is a current whip of mine. It is a baby quilt that I am making. One of the, oh gosh, three or four I've made so far this year. Um, but these are economy blocks. Um... The centers are mostly fussy cut, and I've I've chosen some contrasting solid fabrics um, to make up the rest of the block, and I think it's coming out pretty cool. I might make some larger blocks that are the size of four of those blocks put together, um, because there's this larger print that might get lost if it gets cut that small, so that might get added to the mix, but. I'll let you guys see. Here is the little um, little production line that I have set up with the next few blocks. I'm sorry if I'm wiggling this too much, but those little hatch marks in the fabric, I've folded the fabric so that I can match the corners and get precise blocks when I'm piecing. So those two little lines would get matched together like that. And that, that's how I know that the triangle here would be centered with the block. 
and then since I hate um, basting with pins, if you guys didn't know, if you're sewers and maybe you're not um, confident in keeping things still and steady and pins might bother you or you're afraid to stick yourself, you can totally use Elmer's glue or an Elmer's glue stick to baste um, your fabric into place. It's washable. It doesn't mark up your fabric. All you need to do is hit up a tiny little line. You don't need a lot or a few dots. Place whatever you want to quote unquote pin in place on top of it and then hit it really quick with an iron. Um, and then that'll be in place and it won't move around. It won't shift. You don't have to worry about putting in more pins or taking out pins or anything like that. It'll stay into place and you will get really crisp straight edges and corners. Um, so that's a tip for you. Um, I have these next four cut out and then um, I have a few more that I want to do. And those are just some pieces that I need to coordinate to figure out um, how I want the next few blocks to look. Um, that is my favorite. If you do sewing, um, it's like a starch alternative. Um, and so it's not in a, a spray can or anything. So you can really control how much you put on it. And these blocks have been pressed and um, they're not floppy. They lie really flat um, and it's not stiff either. So you don't get that weird feeling, but um, it's a really great product. And that one is unscented because I'm not a big fan of scented things. Um, I just have a sensitive sense of smell. But um, while we're here, I will show you the beast that has yet been yet to be named. This is my sewing machine. It is huge. You can see right there. It's a Janome Memory Craft 9400. It's like a Quilters edition. <laughs> Go ahead and turn it on for you. Oh yeah, y'all, we're fancy here now. There are all the stitches. Um, to be honest, I haven't even tried most of those because I haven't had a need for them, but I did want a bigger, stronger machine. Um, I was really struggling with um, some of my quilts and I still need to take lessons on this one but it is an incredible machine it has the button to put the presser foot up and down to put the needle up and down reverse thread cutter which is oh, my favorite and the speed this thing is a speed demon and you can see I have all of this area open for sewing and quilting. And I have a really big table attached to it. So over 20 inches of space, considering the rest of the space of the throat. And right now the machine has a straight stitch uh, plate on it, which means, you know, no zigzagging, no decorative stitching. This is just when I want to hit pedal to the metal and piece like a beast. Um, and I really love this feature of the sewing machine. And let me show you. Look at here. About to blow your minds. What? There is more light. And it's adjustable. You probably can't tell right now. But this thing is bright as all get out. And it really helps me see all in there and see around the needle and the presser foot just to make sure that I'm sewing where I need to be sewing and I don't realize that I'm not too late and after the fact. Maybe one of these days I'll film something of the machine in action, but I wanted to show you guys. And if you guys can think of a name, you know, maybe mull it over, maybe after a few more uh, floss tube videos when you get to know me a little bit better, drop me some suggestions. Uh, the more badass, the better. All right, let's move on to something else. Did you guys miss my face? You did, right? All right, so now I'm back for, you know, my haul. Haul, y'all. And the first thing I'm going to show 
is to call out Emily C because she's a horrible human being. Showing off all these wonderful things and patterns and stuff as if we're not going to get tempted and go off and immediately buy something. So when she showed off all her samplers, I went off and bought something. Like I literally found it as I was watching her daggone video. Weeping tree sampler. Come on now. This thing. It's adorable. And you know, in my head, none of it makes sense because it's not stuff that I'm usually into, like houses and alphabets and all that jazz. But I've kind of taken a deep dive into uh, like tombstones and mourning samplers. Um, and this kind of just fit the bill because it has um, a version of a willow. It's called the weeping tree, but um, willows are often portioned like in mourning samplers because um, they're representative of like death and mourning and sadness and that kind of thing. And I just really like the imagery. Um, but what really drew me to this piece were the words that are on it. Here my work forever stands, the labor of two busy hands. And as stitchers, you know that we always have to be working on something. Like you just don't feel right if you're not stitching. So I don't know, the sentiment of this really just kind of blew me away. And I love the house. I love how the tree is set up with little letters dangling almost as if they were leaves. I just really liked it and I needed to order it and I ordered it and got it immediately. I just couldn't wait. Um, so thanks for everything, Emily. I'm just kidding. I kind of secretly love it. Um, before I show you, you know, some more of the weirdness, I'm going to show you something cute that's actually in my stash. It's been in my stash for a while. Um, but I've been thinking of kitting it up soon so that everything that I'm stitching isn't just like dark macabre and weird. Um, you know, a little brightness in my life. Um, a portrait of Santa. I really like this. I have a thing for Santa Clauses. Santa Claus? Plural? Claus? I, you know, y'all know what I mean. I like stitching Santas. So this guy, I mean, look at the expression on his face. I think he's just absolutely beautiful. And what really drew me to this chart were the variety of ways that you can stitch him. Let me see if I can get closer. They've got him here on a really large afghan. And they have him here on a pillow. So he can be stitched in a variety of ways. And I haven't made up my mind yet how to like how I want him. Do I want him on a large count like afghan? Because I kind of feel like that would be pretty dope. Do I want him on a pillow? Or do I just want to stitch him up and have him framed? Um, the only thing that I'm not crazy about, and I'll just give you a quick peek, is that the chart is in color. Just not a fan of it. Um, I'll probably end up making a working copy and hoping that that works. Because um, I do mark my working copies. I like to highlight or else I get lost. But look, that's the chart. It's like really in color. That looks confusing as hell. We'll see. Y'all, don't mind my hair. My hair looks crazy. It's been really rainy. It does, it just frizzes out. And <sighs> Moving on. On to, you know, some of the weird stuff. This is stuff that I've had, like, waiting in the wings forever. Um, today is, let's see, what's today's date? Today is June 25th. Sunday. I placed my Stitching Bits and Bobs order on May 20th. Hasn't shipped yet. Whole month. I don't got my stuff. I added more to the order because, I mean, I was already waiting, but I don't have my stuff. And I've ordered the threads um, for these next two little projects thinking that, oh yeah, they'll totally come in time for June's dark October, uh, you know, dark 13, dark October stitching. No, I get nothing. So, uh, yeah, I'm a little PO'd. So let's keep moving along before I get even more weird. <laughs> I ordered the threads 
for the Curse of the Raven from Carriage House. Yep. Carriage House sampling. Adorable. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. The little raven. I love it. I'm not doing this on a 40 count. It's not going to happen. It's getting done on 32. And it's going to be happy about it. Because it's going to be joined by this one. The Raven's Roost by The Good Huswife. Now, I know that these are definitely out of print and a little harder to find, but I've seen this a few times since I've purchased it, so it's not impossible, and most of the time it does go for a reasonable price, because I didn't pay a lot of money for it. I mean, I do hunt down out of print charts, I'm not going to lie, but I don't pay a fortune for them, because I ain't got it like that. But yeah, this is going also on the same fabric that I'm doing the other one. And I'm pretty sure that I showed this in my stories and I might have even posted, but I dyed this. This was originally the fabric that uh, Celtic Lads was supposed to be on, but I bought it kitted up and um, it was too small. So I hit up the person that I got it from on eBay and I was like, hey, uh, you know, can I use this fabric? And apparently she has a huge stash from like a needlework store and she sent me the correct fabric for uh, Celtic Lads. So I used this piece. Um, and I dyed it, I aged it, and I'm going to stitch both of the tombstones on it. Um, I dyed this with coffee and with tea, um, a la Vona's method, and it's really light, but I think you guys can see the modeling, especially when I let the light shine through. I think it's going to look really nice, y'all, on this. So as soon as I get my Stitching Bits and Bobs order, I'm going to start that. But right now, I'm kind of just uh, waiting in the wings. So that's part of my little haul. All right. So since I haven't gotten that order, I haven't been able to start the Mirabilia conversion process. But um, I wanted to show you guys my DMC card, my color card. So bear with me while I'm looking up something here. All right. I don't know how good this is gonna turn out. We're gonna try it anyway. This is the Mirabilia that I'm referring to, um, Blossom Goddess. And you guys can see, you know, that really light blue um, and those like pinky purples. Those are kind of okay, but I'm not really crazy about the blue in her dress and the orange and the sash and the flowers that are in the bottom of her dress. So I'm going to change that. Um, and you can see I started out my little... Um, conversion thingy-mabob right here, listing all the flosses and what I was thinking to switching them to. Um, and for those that haven't seen one, I'm going to go ahead and show you. This is what a DMC floss colored card looks like. So here you have their entire range including the metallics, the variegated floss, glow-in-the-dark ones, all sorts of stuff, okay? So, what I was thinking is to probably do her dress somewhere in this range right around here I have to pick the right colors um, to kind of match the gradation um, that's actually in there um, I'm also going to darken her hair because um, I think some of the reds are a little too light and bright for her and I think that the sash that I'm gonna use for her might either be in this range or maybe this range 
and I still haven't made up my mind about the purples and the pinks um, for the flowers. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I think that the dress is going to be somewhere around here. Um, maybe this color as the lightest, well, or this, because I think she might even have white in her dress. So, um, it might be somewhere in this range. And what I'm thinking about doing is buying or checking through my stash for all the original colors that she's charted in. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um, then buying the ones or finding the ones that I already have and going from there and making sure that I have the appropriate gradation, um, for my conversion. So that's also waiting on my Stitching Bits and Bobs order because my Mirabilia is in that order. So I can't fully start that conversion until I can actually see it. I know I have the floss list, but that doesn't really help when you don't see the colors in relation to one another. So I have to receive that before I could actually start making and finalizing my plans. But I wanted to give you a better idea of why getting one of these is an absolutely brilliant idea. Um, they're not super expensive. You get them directly through the DMC website, and um, they ship very quickly. So if you're interested in changing colors and you don't have one of these, what the hell are you waiting for? Go get you one. Convert all the things. Change all the colors. Have all the fun. Y'all know you want to. Here's the last little bit of haul that I have to show you guys, and I'm showing you this because... It's a call to action. I need some advice. I need someone that's had experience with dyeing to let me know if I can do this. So if you don't know how to do it, but you know somebody that does, ask them for me, because I need help. I got this chart, Northern Expression Needleworks. Um, it's called Celtic Wings. Maybe you guys are noticing a pattern that I haven't seen myself, but I kind of like these motifs and the fireflies or dragonflies that's better there's little bees in there can you see them oh, they're, they're so cute little flowers and the Celtic knotwork um, is really pretty um, and I'll tell you why I got this one it's a gorgeous chart I mean make no bones about that but it's not something that I'm really usually drawn to. It's kind of light and whatever, but I know that I can dye some fabric for this. Um, and I got it because it came completely kitted. And I normally don't talk about money. I'm not really gonna start now, but I'm gonna tell you guys, it's one time. I got this kitted up, the pattern, silk floss, and some trim. $15, y'all. I made an offer. The person didn't refuse. $15 holla. Okay. So that's why I got it. I think the combination of price and the idea that I can kind of like tailor it to what I like really just convinced me. So what I needed help with is I got the silk floss. It's gorgeous. I think it's like, um, it's some of the same floss that maybe Michelle Cozier was using, Vicky's creation or Vicky something. She doesn't really dye floss anymore, but this has been kitted up for a while. So um, it's hand dyed silk. It's gorgeous, but it's a pretty light green. And I was wondering if I can over dye the silk myself, does anybody know if I can do that? Like if that's a thing, that's what I need help with. Somebody needs to answer that question, like somewhat definitively, you know, help a girl out, let me know. So I'm gonna go show you. These are the purples. Look at that. Flipping gorgeous, that's a different color says silk six strands approximately five yards of floss and this is dated from 2009 so somebody had this kitted forever look at this color 
This is for the little ladybugs that are on the chart. Keep showing you guys. Gorgeous, gorgeous. But here's the question. It's this great variegated green. Um, it probably reads a little bit more olive in real life, but um, it is pretty light. Um, and I feel like that would not work border would look better if this were darker. And it's silk, so I don't want to scrap it and use something else completely. I would still like to use this, but I'm just wondering, you know, can I over dye this and maintain the integrity of the silk fiber? Would I be ruining it? You know, will, you know, a RIT dye bath be okay? Because I know RIT's permanent, so if I d over dye it and give it a good rinse, will this be all right? I don't normally wash my pieces after I'm done with them. So, holla at your girl. Let me know if I can do this. Because I kind of still want to use silks for it. And if not, I guess I can get something else and use this for a different project or trade this with someone. Um, but I mean, this floss is fabulous, y'all. I would still like to use this. So let me know. Let a girl no let me know if I'm gonna destroy it all right so I feel like I've killed enough time and now I'm gonna show you what you really came here to see Mirabilia baby so I filmed a clip I think as soon as I finished stitching her and I'm probably going to insert this right after I stop talking because I'm gonna flip the camera forward so you guys can see what she looks like in all her glory. And she is glorious, y'all. So, wait a tick. I'll come back, probably insert that clip, and then show you where I am right now. So, hey guys. Here we are. It is June 13th, around 7 or 8 p.m. And I just finished all the cross-stitching. <laughs> on my Mirabilia Christmas elegance. And she is hot off the cute snaps. I just did a really, really quick press so that I can come and take a little footage and show you guys before um, I take a little bit of a break before beading and back stitching because I'm honestly a little burnt out on her. But let me see if I can zoom in. I'll just get closer and show you guys of the details and like I said all the gaps are for beads so yeah that's not a mistake well I mean it's partially a mistake but it's supposed to be mostly that open um, I think this area is a little wider than it should be and there should be a few more gaps here but somehow or another I got a little screwed up and all of this is going to get filled up with beads and metallic stitches. So sorry if this is a, a little bumpy, but I'm just so excited. I'm going to take a few days off, work on something else, and then maybe uh, bead her so that I can really just get started on my new Mirabilia when that chart arrives. So yeah. Christmas elegance. Full cross is done. Later, guys. So by now, you guys have seen what a bad bee my Christmas elegance is. And now I have her loaded up on my scroll frame. You know, I've had this scroll frame forever. I initially got it for needlepoint. Um, I don't know what it is, where it came from. And one of my knobs is stripped um, at this point after use. And my dad was kind enough to give me this little clamp to put on here. But if you guys can tell or figure out which brand this is so that maybe I can order some new knobs, I'd really appreciate it. Um, it's, it's a nice one, man. I would like to continue using it. I have a whole bunch of rods for it. And while this is okay, I mean, it's not ideal. There's some hood mess. You know, I need to, I need to find another knob.
You know, like, how do you measure for a knob? How do you find out the kind of nut it needs? Get your mind out of the gutter. I know y'all went there, because I did. <laughs> All right. Let's move on from the horrible nut jokes that are inevitably popping up in everyone's mind. And I'll give you guys a close-up to the little itty bit of beading that I have started to do. And, y'all, once I loaded this up here and started beading, I thought to myself, Self, what the hell is wrong with you? Do you know how long it's going to take you to bead? Because that thing took me a while to do. You know, because with certain beads, I did two passes, and I'm doing it with floss um, that coordinates um, because I do like to press my pieces. I don't want to use, like, Nymo or anything like that. Um, this is going to take forever, y'all. So if you're thinking about doing Christmas elegance, and I know a few of y'all are because, I mean, it's flipping gorgeous. Think about it. Think about it long and hard because you're going to be beating for a long ass time. Remember what I told y'all? All beads. All beads. All beads. So she's gonna be gorgeous. She's gonna weigh like 30 pounds. But she's gonna be gorgeous. So slowly but surely, I think I'm gonna keep chipping away at the beads while I work on other projects. Oh, man. Beautiful. And don't forget, help me out. Find me a knob, a nut, how to measure a bolt. Keep your minds out the gutter, people. Let's keep it clean in here. I'm just kidding. I know y'all are just as weird as me. I have one more thing to show you, and I think it's what y'all been waiting for. I just wanted to do a really, really short clip to show you guys my progress on Celtic Lads. Um, because I'm stitching in some natural light, and I've never been able to do like an accurate picture of um, the silk floss that I'm using for this one, uh, which is this green right here. Um, I think I mentioned in my previous video that that green floss is the silk that came with um, my Little House Needleworks winter sampler. I think they put together their thread kits with that classic Colorworks uh, silk. And whenever I take a picture of it, it looks really similar to the cotton that I'm using, which is Weeks Dye Works. Um, I think it's called Charcoal. Don't quote me on that. Um... And it looks, it's, it's, it's a green. I mean, it's a really lightly variegated green. But um, the silk is like truly, truly green. And I absolutely love it. I'm going to be sad when I use my last little bit of that. But I um, wanted to give you guys an update. Right around here is the page mark. So this, I believe, is my progress on page four. Um, I want to see how much further I can get done uh, within the next few days. I kind of wanted to finish this piece soon, but we'll see if I make that much progress on it. There's no good way to show this, but I'm going to show y'all anyway. because You wanted to see it. Celtic Lads is done, y'all. It's done. We're done here. Look at showing you guys my little measuring tape homie is around maybe 30 inches long stitching wise and I believed I'd filmed a short clip while I was still working on him that I'm going to insert so you guys can get an idea of the silk floss that I use that you guys get a peek of. All right, cheers. See the green? Now both of these flosses are green, but the silk in his shirt, 
that guy's shirt and that thing. I don't know if the little bird or the griffin or whatever it is is like trying to get at that guy's leg or it's another part of like a serpent or something. I'm not quite sure, but it's a silk and it was a joy to stitch with. Um, the other color that I used, I believe, um, was a Weeks Dye Works. I will put the name of the shade um, in the description below. But it is also a green. It just doesn't look like green. The name doesn't sound green. But I assure you, in real life, it is green. Um, and like I mentioned before, I bought this kitted up. But the fabric was too small, so the lady on eBay, I think, was selling it uh, part of an estate, and I acquired it that way. Um, and she sent me uh, the appropriate cut of fabric, um, which allowed me to dye the other one for um, my tombstones. But um, it's a 32-count linen. Y'all know the deal. Um, and I didn't dye it or anything because, I mean, this is already going to be hard as hell to find a frame for and it's already a pretty busy and intricate design um so I didn't want to overwhelm it with like too much more stuff um but yeah I think I used eight skeins a week's dye work dye works um five of them came with the kit but I got a pretty good idea early on how much I was going to need so I ordered five more from one two three stitch knowing that the dye lot was going to be different but at the end of the day um i think it works well because i was alternating dye lots as i went down to kind of also increase at the variegation although the variegation in the floss itself is very very subtle um i just kind of mixed in a skein from what i acquired on ebay with the more recent dye lot um it looks really good. Um, I have two leftover skeins, but it's a really nice color. Um, and I know that I can use it in other projects. But I'd rather have had it and not need it than need it and not have it. Y'all know the saying. Y'all know how it goes. Um, I'll just keep it in my stash and add it to some of the other stuff that I have going on. Um, I had had it in my head that I was going to try to frame this myself. But I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Um... I might not take this one to like an actual needlework framer. I think they might be able to handle this at like Michael's or Joanne's. But I'm going to go up there and grill them and talk to whoever does the actual needlework framing because I need to assure myself that they're not going to wreck my stuff. But um, this piece is just too dope to have sitting around not getting framed. So as soon as I get that done, I'll report back. But you guys can see that um, this pattern was a lot of fun from Courtney's collection. Courtney collection? Yes, I think that's right. Um, it begins and ends with the same little guy. So the, the motif repeats itself. The border is exactly the same all the way up and down the sides and on the bottom, the corners. And that guy up there is the same as this guy right here. And right here in the center is where the design starts to repeat itself in the opposite direction. So I thought it was pretty clever. It was really great. It was a lot of fun to stitch on. It works up really quickly. Um, and while I haven't seen this online at very many places, I'm pretty sure that it's not out of print. Maybe if you can find the actual Courtney Collection website, you might be able to purchase it through there. I'm not sure. Um, if I find the link, I will include it in the description below. Um, but like I said, I got it on eBay. But if I can find a place that still sells it, you know, I'll hook y'all up. But um, yeah, this is it. This is my finish. Um, I don't know when I'm going to be able to have a new start because all my stuff, literally all my stuff is being held up by that Stitching Bits and Bobs order. The floss for my uh, tombstones. My Mirabilia and the chart for my uh, Salem Not Forgotten uh, Sal is in there as well. I have that fabric ready to go, you know, and everything is being held up by that. So 
I might just move on to another one of my uh, current whips while I'm still waiting for that mess. But um, like I'm getting the itch, y'all. I added to that order once. I don't want to have to do it again. But um, I'm just I'm I'm pretty annoyed and I want to get my stuff. But y'all know how that goes. I have more than plenty to keep me busy and occupied. But once you get that little itch in the center of your palm, you know, new stitch, new stitch, new project, you know you want to start something. You know you want to start something real bad. And I'm at that point. I'm ready to start. Because right now, I finished all the stitching on my mirror. I finished all the stitching on this. I need to put something in that rotation. And and don't mind my, my ganky dresser. Um, I chalk painted it because it was a little too country for my taste, that dresser. Um, and I have the hardware waiting to be spray painted. But like the weather in Georgia has not been very cooperative. It's like been monsooning. So I can't really get out in the backyard to spray paint it. But... I need to get the hardware back on there. Hopefully the weather will cooperate. And I've been super busy at work. Uh, we've been working a lot of overtime. So I haven't had too much time to take care of some of those little things. But I don't think y'all are going to judge me, right? Don't judge me. If you're judging me, we don't have a chat. But um, thank you guys. Thank you for all the love, the likes, the comments, the subscribes. Please continue to do so um, to keep me motivated and excited because, you know, that this is an interactive thing. I share with you. Y'all share with me. We watch each other's videos. You know, we keep it funky. Uh, we get together. We chat about stuff. So let's keep lines of communication open. Tell me what you guys think. You know, continue to tell me what I can do better, what you would like to see. I still have some more needlepoint projects um, that I can show you guys and... Maybe some older cross stitch. I don't think I showed you guys any of that this time. But I'll see what I can dig up for the next video. And maybe some more sewing stuff. So um, I was thinking of making a new grime guard. And there's a tutorial out there that pretty much everyone follows. It's really simple. Um, I might be able to take some footage of that process. So anyone that has a sewing machine... You can look for this tutorial or you can let me know if you're interested in me possibly filming, not necessarily a tutorial because the tutorial is online, but I can show you guys how easy it is to make your own grime guard. You don't even need to necessarily sew a straight line. That's how easy it is because if your lines aren't straight, it's not going to matter. There's an elastic in it. It's going to get scrunched up. Nobody's going to see that. Let me know if that's something that you guys would be interested in. Because anyone with even the gankiest, lowliest little sewing machine can make a grime guard. So let me know what you think, if you think that's a good idea. And if you hung out with me this long, I really appreciate it. You know, till next time, Floss Tube. Let's keep it weird and keep it kind. Bye-bye.